Hey everybody, today we're going to take a voyage. We're going to look at Voyager Linux. Now this is a distribution about five years ago. I ran for almost a year on a backup laptop that I had and truly loved it. At that time, Voyager kind of separated itself with the look of the operating system. It had original wallpapers. It just, it had a feel about it that really made you comfortable while you were in the operating system. Now I'm presently at their website, which is voyagerlive.org. I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. And they have several different versions you can download. When you come to their website, this is the screen you're met with. And as you scroll down, it kind of goes over some different spins that they have. You've got Voyager 22.04 LTS, Voyager 22.10 Beta. Then you can come down a little bit more. And then you've got Voyager 11 that's based on Debian Bullseye. These two up here are based on Ubuntu. This is on Bullseye. And then if you scroll down a little bit more, they have older releases that you can get. Voyager 2110, Gamers Edition, Voyager 20.04.2, GS LTS Gamers Edition. And then if you come down a little bit further, you've got the 20.04.2 LTS. And they have just a lot of different ways you can go with it. There's Voyager 10.1 Debian Buster. And then down a little further, they even go back to 18.04 if you wanted to go with something a little older. And what I like is they give you the availability to get smartphone wallpapers to match your laptop that you're using. I'm doing a test today on a laptop in a virtual machine because I want to show you just how responsive and how good Voyager can be. Now, if you come back up to the top, you've got Voyager Ubuntu. And if you go down through here, it gives you all the different versions you can get. And then Voyager Debian right here, tablet computer. You can set it up to run in a two-in-one tablet PC. And then for gaming, Voyager Gaming, and then more and donation. Now, when you first go to the website, it is in French because it is a French distribution. So you will have to translate. Or if you're in Firefox, you might already have an auto translator that will take care of that for you. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and zip on over to the desktop. And if you download Voyager, throw it on a USB or open it up in a virtual machine, this is the desktop you will be met with. And as you can see, it's got a beautiful wallpaper right off the bat. You've got a little bit of transparency up here in this top panel and they've kind of moved it around a little bit. This one is based on GNOME, but the beauty of it is at the end of the video, I'll show you how you can switch over and look at the XFCE desktop that comes included in this ISO. So you can either run it in GNOME or XFCE, whichever one you feel more comfortable with. Now, like I said, they do have a beautiful wallpaper. What I want to do right off the bat is see some other wallpapers. And you're going to have a mixture of Debian. Then you're going to have some original Voyager wallpapers. And then you're also going to have some Ubuntu wallpapers. Now, what you will find out is once you install this to bare metal, it's going to update. And when it updates, you get a lot more of the Voyager type wallpapers. That is what I really like about it when you do download it. You're going to have your regular GNOME settings over here. It covers network, Bluetooth, background, appearance. You can set it for light or dark. I'm going to go ahead and switch it to dark. And as you can see, when you do switch it to dark, it changes your wallpaper. So what I want to do is go ahead and switch it back to a different wallpaper. I think I will go with something like that. Then you got your notifications, you got search, multitasking, applications, keyboard, just your regular general GNOME settings. Now, if you come down here, let's go to about. It lets you know this is Voyager. Uh, device name's Ubuntu. I've issued it 2.9 gigabytes of RAM. I'm running it on an AMD Ryzen 5. And if you scroll down, it lets you know the OS name is Ubuntu 22.04.1. GNOME version 42.2, windowing system is X11 and not Wayland. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close out of the settings real quick. And if you come up top, you're going to have all your regular settings that you're used to seeing to up here. You've got tweaks now that are right here on the quick settings. Let's go ahead and click on the tweaks. And when that pops up, you can make customizations to your appearance, fonts, keyboard and mouse, startup applications, top bar, windows title bars, and then of course Windows. Now your startup applications, the only thing we have right now is a Conkey. And if you look down here, it's been beautifully placed right here where it's out of the way and not taking up too much of the screen. 
and lets you know that your RAM is using about 1.3 gigabytes out of the 2.93 and that you're using about 1% of your CPU. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this because we are familiar with tweaks. And then you come back up top, you got your notifications right here and your calendar along with your weather. I haven't adjusted that to my local location yet. And we'll go ahead and close that and close that. And then you've got your clipboard and then right next to it, you've got auto suspend and screen saver disabled. You can turn that on or off, whatever you want to do. So it's just a click of a button auto suspend and screensaver disabled so that way if you are working on a laptop and you have to get up and move around or stuff like that and you don't need it to auto disable itself you can click on that and not have to worry about it so we'll go ahead and turn that off and close out of that you're on desktop number one you got a quick launch to your terminal right there you just click on it and you've got terminal let's go ahead and run an H top or a top and right there in top, it says we're using about 896 megs of the three gigs that I have issued to it. So it's going to be a little different than what you have down here on your Conky because this is accounting for what part of the operating system is presently running inside RAM. That generally happens when you run it in a virtual and sometimes also when you run it in a live environment. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And then you have your Bluetooth right here and then your radio you could set this up with different channels if you want there's different settings you can adjust here that's all up to you if you download it and want to give it a test drive i suggest you look at all that and then we will go down to the bottom you've got your dock down here we've got firefox obviously is your web browser then you've got files let's go ahead and open up files and i do like that they're using the ubuntu themed icons i like those i really like them against a a darker backdrop as opposed to a white but that's just my personal opinion and you do have right here a voyager pdf that if you open it up you can go through it and get lots of information now you will have to check sometimes this will definitely be in french but when you have that like with this right here let's open it up that it gives you the french screenshots but it also tells you in English of what you want to do. Like in GNOME sessions, to switch to XFCE, close the session, and it gives you step-by-step -step how you can go through and set it up to where you can pick an XFCE session as opposed to GNOME. So we will scroll on down a little bit, and that's pretty much it. You can take a peek at that if you download it and take it for a test drive. But that's files. You know, it's just a lightweight file manager, stays out of your way, and this has got some interesting improvements coming to it uh, on the GNOME 43 release, so it'll be interesting to see if Voyager updates to GNOME 43 quickly or if it takes them a little while. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then we come back down here. You've got your text editor, notes, agenda, which is like your calendar. Let's go ahead and open that up. And I like the theme of the calendar. It goes right along with the rest of the operating system, but you can go in here and do everything that you need to do in there. And then you've got some other settings here. And you can also add weather to your calendar if you would like. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. Back down, you've got private search. That when you open that up, opens up a private Firefox browser where you can go do your searches without worrying about being tracked. Now, obviously, if you're gonna use Google here, that's what's primary. I would change over to something like DuckDuckGo or something like that. But I do like the fact that it's right there on the dock. And probably what I would do would probably be pick it up and drag it over by Firefox if I were running this on a daily basis. So that's just a suggestion from me. And then right next to it, you got Minitube. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Minitube, but this is definitely a quick way to find YouTube videos without having to go to YouTube. So let's say you open up Minitube and you wanted to see something from my channel. So let's go to eBuzz Central. Let's open that up. And what it'll do over here is it'll open up and show you all these videos from my channel. Underrated Linux distros, greatest Linux experience ever. So if I wanted to, I could just play that. And there it starts playing. And you could watch hey, my video from right there. Started with today's video. So what I'm going to do is pause everybody. that so it doesn't drown out while I'm talking. But this is definitely a way to get quick access to YouTube videos that you want to watch without actually having to go to YouTube. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Now, down here, 
This is where you get your software. Let's go ahead and open that up. And once that populates, let's go ahead and maximize it so it's easier to see. And a lot of GNOME distributions have this look to their software center. I'm sure you're familiar with it. It's real easy. You go down through here. It's got suggested, new, and updated. You can also go up here and look at installed and updates if you wanted to. So I'm going to go back to explore. And then if you wanted to do a search, you just come over here. You put in OBS Studio. And there's OBS Studio right there. We would just click on that. And right over here, it would show you all the information about it. And then you could go up here and know that you can get it from the Flat Hub. You can get it as an Ubuntu Deb. You can get it as Ubuntu Snap, and that gives you three different ways to install it. If you want to use a flat pack Snap, you can, or if you just want to go ahead and use the Debian package, you have that ability as well. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the Software Center, back down to the bottom. You got Box Voyager GNOME, and with Box Voyager, it gives you uh, kind of a quick way to get access to different things, like Night Mode. You can open that up, click OK, and you can adjust your Night Mode right here. You can cancel that, and it'll bring you back here if you wanted to go Walls Voyager. Let's go ahead and open that up. And right here is different wallpapers that you can use. It gives you some pretty different wallpapers here. And right here, you can click Set as Wallpaper, and it sets it. And then you can close out of that. And then Walls Explorer, you could change that. Conky Control, you can add different things and change things in the Conky if you want to. Let me close out of that. Switch Voyager to Ubuntu. Wine Plus Gaming, Reparation, Effects in the GNOME Shell. I suggest if you do download this and give it a test drive, the Voyager box gives you a lot of control over your system. Not just with wallpapers, but setting up different things like net speed, screencast, system info, all of that. So definitely take a look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. That should be Show Desktop, Trash, and then of course Show Your Applications. Let's open that up. And right out of the box, accessories, let's open that up. You've got maps, password, startup disk creator, characters, conky. Now let's back out. Games, you've got some games that are installed out of the box. Pac-Man, Invaders, Mahjong, Chess. Graphics, GIMP comes pre-installed out of the box. You've got Shotwell. So it's got quite a few different applications out of the box. Thunderbird, Pigeon Internet, Callbird, Transmission. Office, you've got LibreOffice, Sound and Video. You've got Videos, Rhythm Box, Music, Cheese, Pulse Effects, and Pitv System. OS Uninstaller, Terminal, Decomp, GW Package Manager. And then Preferences, you've got Calculator, System Monitor, Disks, Software Updates, Extension Manager for GNOME. Now what I want to do real quick, let's go ahead and back out of this. We're going to go up here. We're going to log out. Let's go ahead and log out of this. Log out. And there's username. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And if we come down here for settings, there's the XFCE session. Username is nothing. Password is Ubuntu. And it just brought us back into that screen. So I don't know if it's something because I'm running it in a virtual machine that it wouldn't let me go over to there or maybe XFCE is not completely installed on the live version. I don't know, but that guys is a quick look at Voyager. I think it's definitely an operating system that if you want a lot of function out of the box, I don't think you can really beat it. It's got a solid base. It's based on Ubuntu. If you don't like Canonical and you don't like Ubuntu, you could always go with the Debian version. They give you choice, which is what Linux is about, is the freedom of choice. And it's really an overall beautiful operating system. It's probably one of the most beautiful ones I ever used on a daily basis. And like I said, that was like five years ago. If it's something you might want to download, zip on over, download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine. And if you're somebody that's already using Voyager, please, guys, let me know in the comments below. What do you think of it? And if you do, give it a test drive. Drop that in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Please do me a big favor today. Please like this video. Likes on videos are what keeps me in YouTube's algorithm. That way, if you see a video that you get some good information from, I'm pretty sure somebody else out there would enjoy that information as well. So please, like the video. Also, subscribe to the channel. doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. And if you like the channel, 
and enjoy the videos that we're doing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, throwing us a donation on PayPal, or zipping on over to Patreon and becoming a patron to the channel. Those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.